Hi guys, good to have you all back. I am very excited to be back at my crafting desk today. In case you're new to my channel, because you are following the collaboration hosted by Rach and Bella, tips, tricks and hacks for 2023. Let me introduce myself. My name is Margaret. I am from the Netherlands. What I do is paper crafting, junk journal projects and a lot of vintage treasure hunting. So welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy the video. And if you do, maybe you want to stick around. Guys, I'm going to tell you all about these treasures on my desk today. One of my passions is vintage treasure hunting. This is some of the treasures. Um, these are all vintage or antique ephemera pieces, all sorts. I hunt for them. I collect them. It is an expensive hobby. And I don't find them very regularly. So what I do most of the time is I just hoard them. I look at them for a while, then put them away and, you know, never use them. But I do buy them to make something beautiful with, like uh, put them in uh, junk journals and such. So what I want to do today, guys, because you probably all love this, I want to recreate some of the pieces that are on my desk. Making faux vintage ephemera. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So um, if you like vintage ephemera, maybe you can craft along with me. Now, normally I would say I'm going to use minimal supplies. I am not going to do that. I am going to pull out all the stops. Every sort of craft supply that I have available um, that will help me to recreate this. I am going to take out. So hopefully you have some of it. And if I can think of some alternatives, I will mention them. So um, let's just choose one of them and see what we can come up with. Even though I have ideas for all the um, sort of uh, ephemera that was on my desk, I can only do a couple of projects, guys. So um, hoping I will do a lot of them. I'm going to start with this one. Now, I know there are a couple of ladies out there, uh, they are saying at the moment, that's an alteration tech market. We can buy them. You can buy them because you're probably in the US. You can buy them there. In the Netherlands, nowhere to be found. It's not a European thing. I can buy them on Amazon. I have to buy a box of them, a large quantity, which is, you know, expensive. Then I have to pay for shipping costs. Then I have to pay for uh, taxes on them and whatever. And um, at the end, one of these will be uh, a couple of bucks and that's way too expensive. I already made some of these. Love it. I just love to, to make these. So I'm going to make this one for sure. Uh, what else I'm going to make? Airmail envelopes. I just adore these. Sometimes I find them, a box of them. I don't think they make these anymore. I don't know. Um, but I thought, why not make some of it? They are made from tissue paper. I happen to have this tissue paper, but I think you can also make it from normal paper. So air my envelopes. Um, my passion is labels. Absolutely. This, these are more modern sort of sticker labels. They're a little bit glossy. Um, I What I usually do with labels is I buy a nice digital from an artist and then print them and cut them out and use all of them. But I thought, why not try to make some ourselves? I really love the Denison type labels, which look a little bit like this. Um, again, nowhere to be found in the Netherlands. So I want, I'm going to try to make some labels, very simple ones. Tickets, 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 tickets. Um, my next passion. I have loads. I have a gazillion. Well, I do not have a gazillion. Do you know who has a gazillion? Leonie um, on Instagram, Junk Journal Paper Sale. She's a friend of mine. When you go to her house, there are so many rolls of tickets. It's like a bus station in there. I am going to ask her if she'll put um, a photograph uh, of it on Instagram. So to show you, I'm not lying. She has millions. So tickets. I have no clue what this is, but it looks lovely. It is, I think, German. And it has some sort of writing on it. I love the paper. It's with lines and holes. And oh, I don't I don't even know what it is. But it's, you know, you can make this. I think we can make this. And then these are guest checks uh, from shops or restaurants or what have you. And I love these. And also have some stuff, some supplies that I can use to make this. So let's see. Uh, this one for sure and this one for sure. And let's see how far... 
uh, will get. But let's start making some. The alteration tag. I'm going to use, I have this paper, I print on this. This is ivory sword of cardstock, 160 uh, grams. I have a bunch of those. You can also use, well, you can use any color you like, ladies, uh, let's be honest. Um, if you have a file folder, also a thing not available in the Netherlands. So I'm going to use this sort of a manila. It's almost the same color, see? So I'm going to use a piece of the cardstocky, whatever. It does need to be a little bit... Um, thicker yeah i'm going to use a fine liner black one my ruler i am going to use if uh for sure this stem set i'm going to use this one a lot during this video guys my absolute favorite is eccentric by tim holtz now i have a lot of other stamp sets, not by Tim Holtz, but, you know, that I've collected over the years that also have sort of numbers or words or what have you. So if you don't have this one, just go through your stamps and see what shows up and that you can work with. I also have correspondence. Uh, guess what's on here? Um, can you see? This stamp. You know what that stamp is? It's actually this. It's this. So I'm going to use it. So I'm going to use these two stamp sets for sure. And um, oh, black and red ink. I have those. Um, I have a die cut that makes these. Um, you can also just use uh, like a normal hole reinforcer. But I have sort of have these somewhere, don't I? Well, I have this one, but I need to punch a hole in it. And then just a piece of string. And I'm using hemp for this one. Look at the color. I love the color. It's called hemp cord. Well, okay. It is going to be rather simple. No, there's another object. Yes, guys, I invested, especially for you. Um, I invested in two items for this challenge. One of which is this uh, by Tonic Studios. Uh, absolutely Tim Holtz, of course. It is sort of a perforator rolling object thingy. That you can make this with. See? You can sort of rip this. Um, I tested it. It's fantastic. <laughs> I, love, I love it. I also bought this one. Where you could age up um, your papers. Yeah? I am very happy I bought the cheap one. Maybe it's because the cheap one. I don't even know which brand it is. Uh, I know that Tim Holtz also has one of these. A grey one. Yeah. Uh, just use this, your scissors, love. I... No, no, no to this. Yes to this. Big yes to this. I have an alternative. Okay, that's the, are those, yeah, that's the supply. So not a lot. Uh, how big do we want these? Well, I'm just going to sort of mark it. They don't need to be the exact size, love these. Uh, instead of the taking out scissors and such, I am just going to cut it, of course, on my paper cutter. There you go. I will give you measurements just in case you're like, I don't have the example. It is, let's say, a little bit over two and a half inch wide. And then, not white, but wide. Oh, my Dutch. And then uh, five and a half inches long. This one is. But have it in any size you want, love is. I mean, honestly, it's not mandatory to have it at exact that same size. There you go. Here's one. I'm going to do this a little bit later. I'm going to sort of focus on this piece. I want to use this item. If you don't have this item, let me show you two alternatives. For alternatives, you can use um, pattern tracing wheel. I, I believe they're called pattern tracing wheels. I These are vintage ones. I love them. Pick them up all the time. You don't need a lot of them. You just need one. So you can use this to sort of make a stripe with all the with all the holes in it. You can punch holes individually with your pokey tool. Or, and you're probably not even going to rip it off. You can just make small marks just to indicate that there's the line that you could sort of rip it off. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I'm, of course, going to use this one. Now, how tall is this? Doesn't really matter, love. It's your tag and not another one. Yep, there you go. I'm going to do two inches. There you go. I hope you can see. 
see yeah it's like an indication where you can where you can rip it off fantastic <clears throat> now for the for the corners be sure that they are the same i have this one you think the large angle will be large enough as you know i'm not really very fond of this one but you know i bought it was a lot of money so i'm gonna try to use it is this big enough well i would have loved to have it bigger if you don't have this tool um snip a corner off flip it over and then snip it again don't buy this tool <laughs> yes i'm such a good influencer don't buy this tool now we have the shape yeah <clears throat> what i want to do is pick out sort of stamps that would work with this let's see i'm going to pick this if i was an alteration tag what would be on there a telephone number telephone and horizontal or vertical would love this <clears throat> um there is one. Oh, identification card stop, which is fantastic because, you know, I'm going to have this here. <clears throat> claim check. It, does, it, it, is, it is a claim check. It needs a number. Of course it needs a number. Number 509. Yeah. Fantastic. We're just, we're making it up as we go, guys. Uh, something department? Workroom? <laughs> There's so much on here. That you could basically use. Not these. Oh, this would be nice for the library sort of uh, card thingy. Yeah. Let's see. Um, I'm going to start um, at the bottom. This is, this is the smaller part. This is going to be the identification card stop. There you go. Number. Um, this should match the top, right? The telephone number is going to go on the top. What is this? Workroom. Don't know. Vertical and horizontal. Okay. Claim check. Claim check. Going to have this here. Mm. No, I'm going to have this one here. I'm sorry. You know me. <laughs> Keep changing my mind all the time. Yes. I'm going to have this like so. And I'm going to draw the lines. But first, stamping. First stamping. Number 509 in red. You could also choose another color. I also have um, an alteration tag with green. I believe somewhere. Somewhere. 509. I'm going to put that on the top as well. There you go. And I think these are the only two things that I want to have in red. And the rest is going to go in black. Um, Ladybug from Memento. In case you were wondering. And this is Claire. Nocturne from Versafine. I absolutely love this color the only thing is it is very wet and i need to let it dry am i in frame let's go check yep there you go oh, so lovely i just really love it really really love it now um i was gonna put this here right or a little bit here a little bit lower Take a good look around your um, stamp collection because maybe you have something that goes really, really well. Now, what I'm just going to do is draw a couple of lines. Yeah. Here's one. I will try to sort of have them equal to one another in length. And do one more. And I want one more stamp somewhere down there. Don't know what, but we'll find some. There you go. Yeah. What do we want here? Um, claim check. No, we want sort of a word. Uh, hashtag 
95 level, why not? Why not? Why not? Do you want it here? Yes, I'm going to do it there. Well, there's the top. On the, well, the bottom, love, that's not the top. Yeah. I'm going to have the telephone number here. I thought it might look nice. Just have it there. Telephone number. I'm going to make a couple of stripes. Lines, however you want to call them. This is so fun. I, well, for me, this is a lot of fun. I really, really like this. Just to be creative with the, with the stamps that you have. Now, I did go through my stash to see what I have. And I have lots. The problem is, guys, um, a lot of the sets that I have are from AliExpress. Very old ones. You cannot get them anymore. So, I'd rather use, like, the newer ones. Just to... Uh, give you the chance to recreate it in case you have this. In case you have it. A uh, claim check. There you go. What else did we have? The uh, workroom. 20. 220. Well, that's a lot of workrooms. There you go. Going to have a couple more stripes on there, I guess. Uh, on where? Hopefully, this is dry. One more over here. Where's my pin? I was really quiet because this was in my mouth. <laughs> You should put this in your mouth much more often, love, because maybe that's the way for you to shut up now and then. Uh, handle with care. Handle with care? You think that'll be nice? Ooh, shall we do it in red? Yes. And you can make them different every time. I do. I never make, I never make the same ones. Well, I do always have this one on here because I love that one. And, uh, of course, a number. Oh, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Love it. Um, I'm not going to do anything more to it. Does it... Lo it looks sort of real, doesn't it? I think it sort of looks real. Let's have one of those um, hole reinforcers on. I also have red. But it is a completely different color red. Hello. I should have put this on before... I uh, stamped the number because it is actually in the way now. Maybe I should do a normal hole reinforcer then. Yes, I'm going to do a normal one. Why? Because this was in the way. I should have waited. You should have waited, love. Yeah, I know. I know, I know, I know. I need some glue. And I'm going to punch a hole, of course. But first I'm going to glue it on. There's some beautiful sort of yellow on the back. Sticking the hole reinforcer on first and then punching a hole. Why? Because I really want to make sure this number would be on here. Now I'm just going to take off a piece of this, scissors, putting it through there. And if you want to make it more vintagey guys, um, distress it or what have you. Ta-da! Real one, fake one. Real one, nice one. Nice one. Now, for the airmail envelopes, I actually never made one. Well, I made envelopes, but I never made airmail envelopes. Um, you can use all sorts of different papers. Uh, I am very fortunate to have real airmail postage paper. It's sort of very thin tissue paper. 
that you can use. I also have this in green. Um, but I also have a little bit thicker paper in the lighter blue that would work just as well. But you can make them in any color you like, a lovish. You don't need this actually. Uh, but I have this, so I'm going to take a piece of this. This you can buy, you can still buy somewhere. Uh, I found all of these, uh, this in a thrift shop and I find this um, in the Netherlands or I believe Austria, probably Germany as well, at Action. These are sort of paper packs with all sorts of like crafting paper. And I really love these because they look old and vintagey and grungy and, and yummy. To me, they're yummy and very, very inexpensive. Now, before we do all the stamping, we need to make the envelope. For In order to make such an envelope, I need a square piece. At least that's what I think in my head. To make this into a square, I'm just folding it. I'm not really folding it, guys. I'm not having an actual fold, but I'm just going to measure it over here. I need to cut this off and then this is a square. You could also measure it, would probably be smarter. Now let's see how this will work with tissue paper, the cutter, because never use that. Which is, I actually first time using tissue paper ever. Well, it worked, it worked. I am going to do some measuring uh, because I want to find the center of this page. I'm taking a pencil, not my marker, because I also want to erase it. Now I'm going to line up the, this corner with this corner in a diagonal. Yeah. There you go. Making a mark. You don't have to mark it all the way, just in the middle. And I'm also going to do that with the other two corners. This is just a way for me to determine what is the middle of the page, the center. So the center is here. Now I'm going to fold the envelope. I'm going to turn this diagonally. Yes. And I'm folding this corner to the middle, to the center. That's where we marked it. Like so. Folding this up. Maybe you have an envelope punch board thing and uh, you don't need this. But this is just for those of us who don't have the envelope punch board thing. I actually have one. Um, but you know, this is a much quicker way. There you go. We're halfway there. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to fold this up. And I'm going to fold it a little bit over. So I'm not going to fold it up here, but a little bit over. Just to strengthen these corners. Like um, half an inch. Let's say half an inch. Like so. And then I'm going to do the same with the other side. And this is going to be the flap on the top. There you go. Again, I am leaving. I am leaving here like a half an inch. Sort of ish. Sort of ish. There you go. Well, you almost have your envelope. Now you have these um, corners over here. You, you can cut them down. Do whatever you want. Um, I don't mind them. You can leave them as is. I do, however, want to remove this piece here. So I am just going to sort of. Fold it towards me to have it straight. See if it's straight. And then I'm going to fold it back again. For me, that works much better. Because I want to have a straight line. There you go. Let's see if we can remove these. If we open it up, see, you have like this uh, small sort of triangle. Now, you may even have this device. Probably if you have a punch board or a scoreboard or whatever you, you have this device that says notch. So you could use this notch thingy on here. However, this is tissue paper. I am afraid it will, this will eat it. So I'm not going to use it on this one. I am just going to use my scissors to 
cut out this small triangle. But you also can leave it if you want to, lobbies. No worries. The envelope police is not going to come around your house until you did it wrong. Now at this point you can sort of erase this. My eraser is rubbish and I was trying to find my better one. Oh yes, it's here. I was uh, trying to say with no such luck, but... I've had this one for years. Um, it's from Faber Castell. It's a very expensive uh, brand for uh, crayons, for coloring pencils. Um, I bought this when I did my mandala drawings. And that was 20 years ago. So I have, I've had it over 20 years. Um, I especially love this part. I need to find a new one. I highly recommend this. Germany Perfection 7050 from Faber-Castell. Water-based. This is a water-based uh, eraser. And this, not. I never use this. This is fantastic. All right, so. Yes, no distressing. No distressing. We need to do some gluing. Now, um, because I never use tissue paper, I don't know how art glitter glue will react. I am going to take a chance on it. These two small corners I am gluing down yes and this I am gluing down just to itself it just needs a little bit of glue yep are we there yes and then I'm gonna put a strip of glue here I think art is gonna work mm, hopefully it does well it will glue I am not uh, worried about it gluing down or not but will you see it Oh, you will. You will see it through a little bit. Yeah, so maybe... Maybe glue stick would have been better. But, you know, you're not going to see it on the front. And that's going to be the prettiest part. So, well, I also taught you how to make an envelope. Yay! Let's do some stamping. I hope, guys, you have this one. If not, take out a smaller stamp that sort of mimics this. And, you know, stamp in a row. You could also do this. Yeah, or just with a big marker and then mark it. I did not want to make any stupid mistakes, so I did some testing. I have some results. Yes to the notch maker. See, it does work. Yes to glue stick. So no to art glitter glue. Also yes to the stamping. It does take the ink uh, well. So yes, I'm taking out this um, stamp. I hope, hopefully you have it. It is a lovely set. I do recommend it. Um, I recommend the eccentric one even more. That's my absolute favorite. I am taking out Paris Dusk and Memento. Why am I using my smaller like these dew drops? Uh, because I need to uh, ink smaller surfaces. So blue. I'm skipping one. Blue. 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 Yes. And then uh, Ladybug again. Red, red, red. Blue, blue, blue. Red, red, red. Right. Now, hopefully, this is sort of a good size. I am starting at the bottom. Probably not straight at all. But, you know, it is a prototype. It is lovely. <laughs> I absolutely love it. <laughs> Great. Um, now, we also need one that goes up like so. But I would love to have like the red over here. So for this, I need to clean my stamp first. Um, yes, I have some. Now, people are using baby wipes. I don't do baby wipes because no babies in my house whatsoever kind. Well, my fur babies. So I just use what I call lazy housewife wipes. <laughs> we call it lazy housewife. If you're a lazy housewife like me, you just have these sort of cleaning, generic, whatever things. And, and they work for me. They work for me. They probably, I think baby wipes, I don't know, I could be wrong, uh, are more sort of lotion-y, oily. To me, that doesn't make any sense to use them um, on any uh, project. But hey. Uh, we just need one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. We just need five. I'm going to start with red. 
one, three, five, two and four, two and four. Okay, well, there you go. Um, trying to figure out what sort of the middle is here. Yay! Yes. I'm going to do the other side as well, of course. Yeah. And these colors are almost exact the same colors. See that? Well, not really. But let, let's just pretend that they're exact the same colors. And because they're sort of, um, uh, let's call it grainy, uh, they're more vintagey. And there you go. And then I need to clean, clean them again. You, uh, I am like very uptight about this. It needs to sort of, you know, not be uh, blue and blue. It needs to alternate. Doesn't need to be love if you don't need. To. If you can sleep at night <laughs> with stamps that do not alternate, just do it the way you want. Yeah. Blue, 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 blue. Red, red, red. And there you go. I think it's fantastic. Now, you can do the other side. I'm not going to do the other side because that will take um, up a little bit more time. I do, however, want to put on something like it. And on the stamp set, there are a couple of things that says airmail um i think i want to use this one. Oh, this is lovely isn't it are you gonna use it? i'm gonna use i think i want to use this one um there is a big one on this one as well on the uh, bottom this is left right right yeah left corner uh, if you don't know i have a big problem with um right and left especially if i Need to go quickly. Quickly, go right. Or the other right. Uh, I'm going to use the same blue. Now, maybe, maybe you have these real sort of airmail uh, um, stamps. I do. I'm not going to use it on here, of course. Um, but, you know, you could, you could. I think we did a great job, right? Love it. I want to make some tickets because, guys, this is really fun to do. I um, already have a video on making tickets. I, I believe I even have two of them. Uh, I will not link them below. I will put them at the end of the video. There's going to be a, my picture in the middle and then a playlist and uh, a recommended video. So it's going to be the recommended video. Uh, for this, you're going to need a piece of cardstock. This is like a mustard yellow uh, color. I also had uh, this sort of burgundy that would have been nice or sort of a manila color. I, I just thought, why not do yellow? I want to make them sort of equal to this. Maybe a little bit bigger. I'm just going to mark it again. Let's use a pencil off. I'm going to cut off a strip. Doesn't really matter how big it is. Now, in my other videos that I'm making tickets, um, I'm also doing some stamping and some collaging and such. For this, I am mainly using um, my Tim Holtz stamps. But um, if you really like it, watch that video. You can do it with basically anything. But I want to try to mimic this as much as possible. Now, I don't have a, like this sort of scent um stamp do i no but i do have i do have some rub-ons that have this sort of small c mm. let me let me i'm gonna think about it i am going to use three stamps this one is from the um, eccentric set and these two are from the correspondence set yeah also going to use a circle, just a um, one inch circle that you can punch or something like it. Now, I'm going to start 
on this top i am starting with a number could be any other number guys you don't need to use exactly these ones but you know i have these so i'm gonna stamp a number on the top like so yes then i want to see how much do room do we have i want to have this on here but i want to have the four in the middle like so but i do not want to uh, have the all the letters go over the four so what i was thinking i'm just going to sort of eyeball it there's a drinking game going on if if you didn't know every time i say eyeball it which is probably a lot uh you can take a sip of your whatever hopefully it's tea I lost my spot, but that's okay. So I'm going to put the four down or any other number that you want here in the middle. Now I'm going to cover it with a piece. I'm going to turn it over with a circle. Yeah. Any old stamp will do. Something scripty, something with numbers, something with whatever you want. Do have it the right side up, love. I will. To sort of position it. Oh, it's it's going to be off. Okay. Um, yep. Now what happens is this. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> it looks like like a real ticket. Now uh, most of you are gonna be like uh, Margaret. I have ticket booth by uh, Tim Holtz. I do as well. I know. It's nice, uh, but it's nicer to make some yourself. And then gonna end again with this one now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna leave a little bit of room in between and repeat this step yeah i'm gonna do it off camera because we're already almost running out of time and i really want to show you how to make these yeah here they are now i did find i have this box uh with the alphabet stamps so i did find a let, uh, letter c <laughs> so uh why not use it i'm gonna do it behind the four and a half there you go, four and a half cents. Looks even more realistic now. There you go. Now I'm going to use this tool again, but you can, all, can also use the uh, pokey tool. Um, I use that in the other videos that I made and like a hole punch. Um, you can do this with your cropper dial or whatever sort of device you have. Yes, I sort of tried to figure out if I could make uh, three of them on one ticket, on one strip, and that worked. Try to have this sort of in the middle, Lovie. Yep. So I'm going to make this, yeah, also over here in between. Really like this tool. And then you're going to take your sort of hole punch and hopefully you can see I want the stripe that we made in the middle. Yes, I'm eyeballing it. And I'm cutting half a circle out. Like so. Also on this side. Again, eyeballing it in the middle. Punching half a circle. Of course, also on the other side. And then on the top ends, I am punching a quarter of a circle out. Like, see, a corner. Like so. Again, on all four sides. Hopefully you can see. Inky fingers. Yeah. Because you've been stamping all day, love. And the last one. Now, tell me this isn't fantastic. It, you know looks sort of the same right <laughs> i just love it and make them in all colors because you know i have this and i have this and do make them from a little bit sturdier paper yeah like cardstock or what have you so it's almost like real tickets i really love the trick with the circle um, it just makes it look more realistic to me so tickets yay unfortunately i only have time for one quick project 
and that's going to be the labels they are going to be very very simple with minimal supplies now these are the sort of the modern one with the glossy ones i don't like them but i want to make them sort of the same for this i'm going to use a piece of cardstock yeah this is sort of a let's say a tea dye or a linen uh color uh which will make them a little bit more a little bit more vintagey um, and what you need is a marker now you can choose any color you want i have this box of very cheap markers they are rubbish i must say they are rubbish i would have rather had them very expensive but i hardly ever use them these are from deco time from uh, action mine has a brush tip and a fine tip that'll be fantastic if you have this and a ruler don't use um a ruler that you really really love <laughs> like i have this one it's a vintage wooden one uh with this because i we want to make some uh, lines with it and i'm very very afraid it will sort of ruin my ruler this is metal one so you can clean it so a ruler um and scissors i'm going to use my paper cutter because i like that much better and again i'm going to use this device guys don't buy it again uh just use your um scissors to make these snip these corners you can make templates on a plastic playing card or on a credit card if you want to that is a much cheaper much better way with lots more options now let's get started because we don't have the time margaret start stop babbling uh, try to decide what so sort of size you want them i think i want my um labels to be two inches wide yeah it's usually the the sort of size that i go for two inches wide by three They're going to be big labels make them any size you want lovies it doesn't really matter Awesome, I'm just going to do one. I'm just going to do one. So, you have your labels. Now, use your template or if you have this stupid device, use it. You, you've been using your stupid device a lot, lovey. Yeah, maybe you should buy it. Maybe, you know, you should buy it. It is, it is actually a wonderful size for making labels. See, it's already a label shape. Now, I hear you. You're like, but I have Tim Holtz um, stamp sets or die cuts or what have you. I know. I have them as well. But in case you don't, and in case you don't have a printer, you just have paper and, you know, these, you can make them. Let's try. Guys, uh, I zoomed you in. Disclaimer, this is take number five or what have you, because it kept going horribly wrong. What went wrong? Um, as I mentioned, the marker is very sort of juicy. <laughs> I'm just calling it juicy. I am not using the, the brush tip anymore. It bleeds a lot. My It was all over everywhere. I had to wash my hands because, you know, inky. So I'm just using the fine tip. So I'm hoping this will work. Otherwise buy some denison labels <laughs> don't make them yourself it is it is simple guys you have your label all to the size that you uh cut to the size that you want snip the corners i'm just gonna leave um in this uh, on this label like an eighth of an inch eyeballing it cheers as always now if you look at like the real vintage labels uh, even these ones all the edges on there are not the same size so it doesn't really matter if it's not the same size. I, however, want to make them the same as possible. Take out your uh, marker and you just you draw a line and another one and another one. Now, if you have markers that bleed a lot, please be very careful with removing your ruler. Yes, don't move it. Lift it. Lift it. There's all sorts of red on here now. Use a lazy housewife wipe or, or just a paper kitchen towel. So I'm just going to use this. This, this uh, fine tip dries a lot quicker than um, the brush side. Repeating it on the other side, hopefully the same size. Because I won't sleep at night, otherwise I'll be lying awake. It's not the same. What did you do? You need to go downstairs and do them again. 
honestly, sometimes it happens. Well, not really. But there are certain things. Lift it, guys. Don't move it. I'm mostly saying this to myself. There are moments. <laughs> Gonna tell you a funny story. Yes, I'm a funny lady. Now the shorter ends, right? Um, when I hang up my wash, yes, with clothes pins, you know, where, where you pinch in. I have the plastic ones, lovely ones with lovely colors. Uh, you have different colors, of course. I cannot hang up one article of clothing with two colors of these pins. I just cannot. So why not just buy all the same color? You know, that's boring. <laughs> that's boring. And I also want to sort of, uh, you know, challenge myself. So yes, uh, sometimes, well, maybe once a year, uh, the lovely Tim <laughs> hangs up the wash. And he does it, of course, then with random of these pins. I need to check then because otherwise I can't sleep. See? All the, all the edges. Not really because you didn't do a very good job over here, love. And also not over here. Yeah. And then we're going to do the corners. Diagonally. There you go. Same with toilet paper. Yeah, toilet paper on a toilet. Now, that's where you usually find the toilet paper. Um, the paper needs to go over the roll and not under the roll. It's a thing. I know, it's a thing. Even when I'm at somebody else's house or at a restaurant or another public bathroom and the paper is hung uh, the, the wrong side. The wrong side. And I don't know why it is the wrong side. Uh, I change it. <laughs> I just do. I don't ask, like, can I change your paper roll? No, I'm just changing it. And if uh, even somebody mentioned it, did you change my paper roll? My answer is, you're welcome. Because now it's up the right way. This pen works, uh, this side of the marker, which... Uh, Works much better. Talking, you know. Difficult sometimes. Love it. It's not finished. It's not finished. Because I want to draw like this small line inside. So leaving a little bit of room, hopefully even on all sides. Do not mark it all the way to the end, lovies. Just like so. See? Like so. I'm going to do all the straight sides first and then the diagonal side. Not all the way to the ends, leave a little bit of room. Hopefully as much room as you left uh, between these two lines. Ooh, clean it love, clean it. Oh, I will make more of these because I want these in all colors. Like lovely green ones. And you can also have all sorts of uh, background colors. I really like this background color, but you know, you have them white. Or, ooh, maybe because I have white jelly roll things, I can make them with black on black cardstock. That'd be amazing. And now you just line um, these two dots up. Am I still sort of in frame? Hopefully, well, you know, this is self explanatory. Just a little bit tedious and a lot of work. But I do love the end result. This is for when you don't have a printer or don't have uh, the Tim Holtz stamp or whatever kind of label stamp you have. Make them yourself. And the last one. Yay, I made one. <laughs> I'm very happy with this one. Do you want me to show you the ones that were total failures? Like this one. Look at all the bleeding and such. Yeah, total failure. Well, you know, it looks more vintagey. But this one, much better. Love it. I think the labels and I got off on the wrong foot because I actually love it now. I made two more in a different uh, well size. This is actually, it's called Blue Indigo. I have a box with 50 of these markers. I'm going to make all 50 of them. Like, an, like a longer one. 
and then this one um, is a smaller one in green i did use the, the smaller setting on this why why not i have it use it so yay to the labels i know you can do this way faster with a stamp and what have you but if you don't have the stamps and also make them any size you want if you have, want to have them really big small or you know i think it's a fantastic way uh, to use them guys um i don't have any time for another project but i'm going to show you the end result all the things that we have made here they are we started with the alteration tag i just love it it's like real right it's you know it looks real to me well it looks real to me i just really enjoy it i'm going to get a lot of questions probably about the stamp set that i used um i'm going to show you uh, one more time quickly one of them is eccentric and the other one was correspondence and correspondence one i mostly used for uh the airmail label this one is rather new this one is a little bit older love it but go to your stash guys see what you have absolutely love it we made then the airmail envelope can you hear it yes um also should do some stamping on the back didn't do it because i really wanted to do some more um projects with you guys love it love it love it love it then a ticket it's like a roll yeah it's so so cute it does really rip um again it's this device from tonic studios it's called a perforator a mini perforator or some i, I don't know i i threw away the package i'm sorry yeah lovely and then the labels that turned out actually pretty nice i'm going to make a lot of these on different backgrounds um with different papers probably going to use up some scraps so i hope you enjoyed it guys i hope you could craft along with me i need to thank uh rach and bella again for um inviting me to join the collaboration i absolutely enjoyed it um i need to tell i needed to tell them in advance what i was going to do and that was a little bit tricky because my mind wants what it wants so i went to safe route i went what i love vintage ephemera making your own i hope you will enjoy all the other videos that are coming up from all the lovely um uh, collaborators um amongst them are some smaller channels Please go watch them. Please go watch them. Because, you know, uh, they need all the help you can get. And then there's like the queen on there. Gail Augustinelli, the matriarch. I, I love her. Uh, G. Kerr, Angela. Angela's coming next. Angela. Hi, Angela. I love you. Um, even Gary. Gary, uh, the crafter. Uh, Shinuki Art. I, I don't have the list in front of me. But, you know, nameless people. Good luck to all of you guys. Um, I'm going to watch all of the videos. And I hope to see you all my regular viewers um sunday sunday yes i have another thrift haul <laughs> it's a fantastic one hope to see you then bye guys